Okay, in the last clip we got things down to here. Um, and I've repeated this matrix here, except I've included all the calculations uh, that go with these instructions. If we add four-fifths of the new second row, which is this row, to our first row, our existing first row, which is this one, and uh, complete the calculations all the way across, this is what we get. Now, I'm not going to go through the details of the calculation of every fraction. Um, it's simply, you don't want to watch it. Um, you need to learn to do it yourself. If you can do it yourself, you can understand uh, where these things came from if you use basic fraction arithmetic, uh, although it gets kind of messy and kind of extensive. And uh, even my chances of getting through this entire calculation uh, by hand or even with a, a, a simple calculator uh, are not particularly good. So. Um, in any case, uh, this is what we get. The calculations are straightforward. If you do them accurately, do all your bookkeeping and so forth, it works out. And uh, the last row, the et cetera here and the last row, uh, turns out to be this. Okay? So we're going to continue from here to give you some indication, because this is where the fraction calculations uh, get even nastier. And we will do a couple of those and uh, give you some guidance as to where things go from here. All that's left in the calculation at this stage is to simply, uh, our third row is done. This is the um, third row of the calculation. And uh, actually, I think I do have a slight error here. Let me stop and see if I can correct it. Uh, even slight errors are pretty tragic here. Uh, I multiplied the third row by uh, negative 13 over 97, and I did that. Um, except I really didn't do that. Okay, I don't have that third row right. I'm going to correct that. Okay, this last row, which was obtained just by multiplying this row by negative 13 over 97, um, I got to here, and I was kind of right, except uh, uh, I had a negative on this thing. Uh, should have been 19 over 97 instead of negative 19 over 97. Uh, here, I, I just wrote this down without multiplying it. Uh, if I multiply negative 13 over 97 by negative 23 over 13, 13 divides the 13, and I end up with uh, just the 23 over the 97. And if you write that out, you'll see clearly how that works out. And then negative 13 over 97 times 1 is clearly not 1. It's negative 13 over 97. Um, OK. Now, we have the third row with a 1 here. All that's left, uh, our third row is done, as I started to say before. So I'm going to write that down. OK, there's our third row. Here's our dotted lines. Okay, let me move the board over here just a little ways back where it was, because I, I'm less likely to block it if it's over here. Um, okay, now we've got to get this row and this row with zeros here and here. That's going to be very easy. Now the calculations are a little messy, naturally, and uh, you're not really going to want to do them. <coughs> I probably won't ask you to do anything that's complicated anyhow, but um, at least not on the test. You should do it before the test. You should do at least a couple of these so that you get more adept at doing this. Uh, but what we want to do now is we want to take um, well, we want to get rid of the 3 thirteenths here. So we're going to take negative 3 thirteenths, 3 thirteenths, not 17 times the second, uh, times the new third, and we're going to add that to the second. So it's the second plus negative 3 thirteenths times the new third row. And that is going to give us 0, 1, 0, because negative 3 thirteenths of 1 is negative 3 thirteenths. And when we add that here, we're going to get 0. Now we'll figure out the rest of it in a minute. But that verifies that this operation is going to give us uh, a valid second row. Um, and then uh, we're going to do the first plus negative 18 thirteenths 
times our new third row. And that's going to give us our first row. And it's going to give us 1, 0, 0 to start with. And that's, of course, our goal because negative 18 thirteenths of 1 is negative 18 thirteenths, which added to 18 thirteenths gives us 0. So we have the identity matrix here. Now we've still got to figure out what goes in the rest of the inverse matrix over here. Um, I'm not going to write it out on the board. I'm going to write it out off camera uh, just because it's going to, you, you don't really want to watch all the writing. Uh, the explanation is fairly straightforward. Okay, well, uh, the second row is 0, 1, etc. You can copy that down. There's your second row. And uh, you, should, you should have uh, done this calculation yourself or at least attempted it and see how uh, messy it gets. It gets moderately messy. But if you keep your wits about you and do it systematically, uh, like I seldom do myself, uh, but you should because I have in the past and I know how it works out. Um, uh, and how you should do this. Okay, well, then you're going to add this to negative 3 thirteenths of the new third row. Now, negative 3 thirteenths of 0 and 0 give you 0 and 0. Negative 3 thirteenths of 1 gives you ne negative 3 thirteenths of 1 is negative 3 thirteenths, and you should get that straight. Um, then, uh, what's negative 3 thirteenths of 19 over 97? Well, it's going to be negative 3 times 19, which is easy enough, negative 57, over 13 times 97. Now, I'm just going to keep that in the form 13 times 97. We could multiply that out. 13 times 100 would be 1,300. 3 times 97 is 39. 1,300 minus 39 is 1,261 if you want to do that. So I'll just write down 1,261. But there's really no point in multiplying out the number. Uh, at this point, we're simply hoping that things are going to simplify a lot when we do all the additions and get what we get. Now, actually, I shouldn't have written that down there, but I'll just write down that 13 times 97. I can't read that. I can't read that. Um, I think it's 1261, and I really did that in my head. I'm not faking it. Um, uh, you know from the number of mistakes I make that I don't fake it. Okay. Um, then uh, over here, uh, negative 3 thirteenths times 23 ninety sevenths. Uh, you should be able to multiply negative 3 times 23. Negative 3 times 20 is negative 60. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, so you get negative 69. And then it's 13 times 97 again. Okay? Uh, and then uh, negative 3 thirteenths times negative 13 over 97. Now you're going to have a 13 here and a 13 here. Negative times a negative. 13s are going to divide out. You're going to end up with 3 over 97. Uh, and I wrote 39 over 97. Again, proving that I'm not faking anything. Not sure that proves that I could be... Uh, uh, perpetrating a massive scam here, but I believe that's 3 over 97. Okay, so now when we add these rows, uh, we're going to get 0 here, we're going to get 1 here, we're going to get 0 here, as we already know. Uh, and then we're going to do 3 thirteenths times negative 15 over 37 times 97. Um, just for illustration, okay, uh, 3 over 13 minus 57 over 13 times 97. Now you see the wisdom of writing this number in factored form, 13 times 97, rather than multiplying out 1,261. Uh, the advantage is we can find a least common denominator, uh, which is going to be 13 times 97. So we multiply the 3 thirteenths by Ninety-seven over ninety-seven minus fifty-seven over thirteen times ninety-seven, and what do we get? Well, three times ninety-seven isn't bad. Three times a hundred is three hundred. Three times three is nine. Subtract nine from three hundred, you get two hundred ninety-one over 
13 times 97 minus 57 over 13 times 97. And that's getting a little hard to read. Uh, you can hear the numbers. You can do the numbers. You can see what I'm doing here. Uh, kind of running out of room. Uh, but 291 minus 57 is going to be 234. So that's 234 over 13 times 97. Now hopefully either 13 or 97 will go into 234. And as it turns out, 13 times 2 is 26. 13 times 20 is 260. 234 is 26 less than 260. So that this comes out 18. We get 18 over 97. So that uh, this addition reduces down to 18 over 97. The denominator, even though it looked like it was going to get really ugly with this 1261, uh, turns out to reduce down to 97. There's no way we could have anticipated that. There's no particular insight. Uh, you just got to crunch through the numbers. Now, if you do the uh, same thing with the uh, 5 thirteenths, uh, you're going to, of course, uh, add that to negative 69 over 13 times 97. The steps are identical. It's just you're going to have a negative 69 here and a 5 thirteenths here. Uh, you're going to multiply this by 97 over 97. Uh, do the multiplication, keep the denominator factored, and the numerator is again going to be uh, divisible by 13, and you're going to end up with a fraction whose denominator is again 97. Okay, you can do likewise throughout the calculation. Now, of course, uh, the easy part here is 0 and 397, which gives us 397. Um, <coughs> you do the same thing with first row plus negative 18 thirteenths times the new third row, you're going to get this. Now, the big point of this is that this matrix over here on the right, uh, of course, the matrix on the left is the identity matrix. The matrix on the right is our inverse matrix. So uh, we have our A inverse. And we'll go ahead and use A inverse to uh, complete the solution of our original problem. <coughs> 